Welcome back to the channel. Recently, Kelly Thompson, who you probably don't know who that is. She's been writing Captain Marvel for a few years now. Somehow the comic book has not been canceled, mostly out of spite. Decided to go out there and antagonize the paying customers for no reason. Completely unprovoked and here to talk to me about that is our social media correspondent, Aaron Sparrow. How you doing, Aaron? I'm doing all right. You know, as a social media correspondent, I think I want to get like the little Kermit jacket, you know, where he would like go out and he'd have a little trench coat and a little news hat. I think uh, I think I need that. We need to kind of like pump this up a little bit. <laughs> it's been rather quiet. And honestly, Kelly Thompson isn't normally one of the writers that goes out there and antagonizes people. It was really out of the blue. This is what she said. It was so strange. The way dudes get upset about perceived Mary Sue is so embarrassingly telling. We understand you're afraid of being laughed at. And yeah, we're fucking laughing because you're fucking embarrassing. What the hell is she even talking about here? About p your people are afraid of being laughed at by calling out Mary Sue characters and why they suck so bad. Uh, who can tell? Like, uh, you know, like you said, Kelly's not usually one who uh, goes out and, and makes a lot of noise. You know, she usually seems to keep her head down and uh, and just work on her books, which uh, is, you know, commendable. Uh, I think that uh, she would be she'd be far better served continuing to do that than to go out and attack customers in this way, especially in such a bizarre, like non sequitur. Uh, you know, it just reminds me when people post a thing and it says nobody. And then somebody's comment, it's like, yeah, nobody's, you know, talking to you, but then you had to come and chime in. It was a really strange thing. And obviously she is working on like the biggest Mary Sue out there, at least in comic books. Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, absolutely ruined by Kelly Sue DeConnick. And she hasn't done anything to improve the character. She's had a very nondescript run on the series. It's going up to issue number 50, but there haven't been really sales associated with it for almost a year and a half now. It's kind of embarrassing that they're even continuing it. But they didn't want to cancel it again because they've had to reboot the goddamn title like 12 times in 12 years now. Yeah, you want to talk about things that are embarrassing. Uh, the fact that they keep having to reboot Captain Marvel is pretty embarrassing because they cannot get that character over. And part of the reason they can't get the character over is because they don't put anybody on the book who does anything really compelling with the character. Uh, I don't know if there is a mandate that Carol's not allowed to have any flaws. She's not allowed to show any personality. She just has to be this uh, kind of like hardcore, uh, you know, just absolute bitch all the time. Um, but she's not a fun character anymore like she used to be. Uh, so that's that. I mean, that's really the thing that's embarrassing. And it's embarrassing when writers have to go out and attack the customers because the customers are dissatisfied with what they're doing. I think that is embarrassingly telling. And I think we're all, uh, I don't think we're laughing at it, but I think we're all just, uh, you know, we're, we're all getting pretty indifferent at this point. Yeah, and who's like worried about being laughed at by some like nobody comic book writer? In fact, she was a little bit called out by one of the responders to the tweet itself. They said, how them comic sales doing? And what she replied, pretty fucking great. Thanks for asking about to write issue 50 of Captain Marvel. Sure, the, the series is getting up to issue number 50, which is something they've never actually done with Captain Marvel. So. I guess a tip of the cap, but the last time we actually had comic book sales data, Captain Marvel was the 132nd ranked comic book series in the entire market on issue number 40. And if you go back and do a little research, that lets you know that the sales were right about 10,000, perhaps a little bit less than that. Something that would have been canceled years prior back in the day with Marvel Comics, but they continue going ahead with it now. Terrible sales. No, I feel like uh, I feel like this is kind of um, this this book benefits from, you know, what I call comic book socialism is it's a book that they want to keep in print, even though it's not profitable, uh, unless, you know, Kelly and her team are just getting paid like nothing to do this book. Um, but still, you know, to print uh, to print a comic book, you know, in general, you're looking at spending about five thousand uh, dollars even on the cheap end for your, your creative team uh, and for everything that goes into it. Uh, so, you know, to do that, to get a return of like 10,000 copies sold is uh, is not not profitable. That book probably should be canceled. Uh, so, you know, that's that's a little bit embarrassing, too, to, uh, you know, to be touting that, you know, you're about to write issue 50 on a book that nobody's talking about and that has abysmal sales. And it's just being kept alive because, you know, it's it's politically expedient to do so. I think the bigger issue here is the fact that putting out a tweet like that, you know, attacking your customers, what how does that help your sales? How does that improve anything in the industry? All it does is it will make more people walk away. Now, granted, the people that she's addressing probably aren't reading Captain Marvel anyway, because, you know, she is writing a Mary Sue. Uh, she is writing an embarrassingly shallow character. So. You know, in that in that respect, you know, she probably won't lose too many sales. It's not like there's, you know, many sales to begin with. But I think that a better strategy would be going out and trying to 
draw people in and tell them why they should be reading Captain Marvel and why you're trying to do the best job for them so that they will come in and they'll, uh, you know, start reading that character and maybe give it another chance. You know, if you feel strongly that you're doing a good job, why aren't you talking about that? Why aren't you talking about the positives of what you're doing as opposed to attacking the customers and telling them to piss off because they don't like the character as it's been written the last several years? No one's talking about this series. I do about 60 videos a month. I get thousands of comments every single week and nobody has ever said, Wes, why don't you ever cover Kelly Thompson's Captain Marvel run? It's awesome. They don't even say, why don't you cover Kelly Thompson's Captain Marvel run? It sucks because everyone is indifferent. No one gives a shit. It's so mediocre and boring. No one talks about it either good or bad. And really, she's the one that should be embarrassed because she's the one that's delivering something no one cares about. Well, this entire, you know, the entire tweet is rather embarrassing because it feels like nobody's talking about my book. Nobody's talking about me. Uh, I need some attention. You know, I need I need to get noticed. So let me put out this tweet that's going to that I know is going to rile people up. Uh, and, you know, that's exactly what happened. And, and here we are, you know, talking about Kelly Thompson for the first time in, in God knows how long. Um, so I guess, uh, you know, I guess it I guess it worked. But, um, you know, is that is that really? what you should be doing as, as a writer of, of this character, or, or should you be out promoting why what you're doing with this character is awesome and interesting and should be checked out. And um, if I was, uh, you know, if I was Kelly's editor, I would, uh, I would say that's, that's what you need to, that's the messaging that you need to be putting out there is like, what are you doing? What are you doing? That's interesting. You know, promote the book. These, these artists and writers, they're never going out and they're promoting the book. They're just antagonizing customers, but you never really see them talk about, man, this new issue, here's a page from it. I'm really proud of it. You know, I hope you guys check it out. That's what everybody should be doing. But instead, everybody seems to have this idea that, you know, they're working for their editor, they're working for the company, and it doesn't matter if anybody buys the book, you know, the customers are secondary, they don't matter, because it's just this, you know, we're just putting out content, and uh, it doesn't matter if it's profitable. Well, eventually, it will matter if it's profitable. I know that, uh, you know, that's, it's been a couple of years now of, of nonprofit, and uh, nobody seems to be changing course, but eventually, it's going to happen, and then everybody's going to be out in the cold, and then they're all going to be crying and putting out GoFundMe's to pay their rent. We've been seeing this a lot lately. Have we ever actually seen an example where fantagonism to own the chuds has ever resulted in bigger sales or more spotlight on the comic book and, you know, increased enthusiasm for a title? If anything, it just makes people that maybe were reading it or maybe they read it, they were like, it's not very good. They're like, oh, she's a bitch too? The comic book's not great and the writer sucks. Let me get out of here and stop reading it. I don't know why anyone goes out of their way to go on social media and just put their worst face forward all the time. It's, I think it's just everybody's in their bubble. Um, you know, a lot of comic book professionals, they don't interact with people outside of their immediate circle. A lot of them are like indoors all the time. You know, they lead kind of like very insular lives. So they get into this bubble of their peers and their peers all talk about how much they hate the customers, how terrible the customers are. And so to impress their peers and to be part of that peer group, they'll go out and they'll attack the customers. You know, they'll go out and say negative things and try and get that negative attention because, you know, negative attention is attention. And, uh, you know, they, they want that attention. They want some kind of attention. And, uh, you know, for the longest time, I guess maybe Kelly hasn't been getting it because nobody's talking about that book. Well, no, because it's, it's Captain Marvel. It's the most boring character at Marvel Comics. It's a character they tried to force feed down the customer's throats. People rejected it, and they just can't accept it at this point. That's why they're going to get 50 issues out of this very mediocre run. She's done really nothing interesting or new with the character. Basically just regurgitating old stories told with other characters in the Marvel Universe, throwing it in on Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, and that's just par for the course for Marvel Comics these days. They don't do anything interesting or innovative or new with any of their characters. Not even Spider-Man gets new material really these days. And this is what you get, a bunch of people that are sitting there in obscurity, wondering why no one cares about their book or what they have to say about anything, so they have to go out there and pop off at the mouth, use fantagonism just to get their 30 seconds of fame. And to be quite honest, the worst thing to ever come out of Carol Danvers as Captain Marvel is the notoriety that Kelly Sue DeConnick got because this is her playbook. And now a lot of the female creators within Marvel and DC have decided to emulate that and think that Kelly Sue DeConnick is a role model rather than a cautionary tale of how to destroy your comic book writing career. 
it's uh, it's kind of sad because you know I think that uh, you know Kelly Thompson, like as we said, does not get a lot of attention. I think that uh, you know she's written some things that people didn't enjoy, but I think she's written some things that people did enjoy. I think people liked her take on uh, on Gambit and the Rogue. That was uh, you know that was fairly well received. Um, I think that she probably has an affinity for the X Men, and you know what? Maybe that's part of it. Maybe the fact that you know they got all these hacks on X Men, and Kelly feels like she could really be doing something in there, but uh, you know she's not part of that of that of that kids club that's uh, that's writing that book. You know maybe this is one of those things where it's like well i need to get some attention i need to make sure that the editors know who i am i need to do my little you know drop my little coin in the bucket you know of uh, of hating on the fans like everybody else does so that uh, i can uh, i can maybe get on on a higher profile book and uh, actually get some attention i don't know uh you know i don't want to uh, I, i'm just speculating on motives here but um it to me it just all seems counterproductive and i think that uh you know there's there's better ways for kelly to express herself and i think that there's uh, better ways to get attention for uh, a flagging uh, you know book that's just flagging in sales. Obviously, Aaron, you're a comic book editor, you're a writer. I imagine one day you wanted to work at Marvel, but with this type of behavior and that type of atmosphere associated with the company, would you even consider working for Marvel anymore? Does that trickle down to the other prospective talents that are actually good that they should be trying to acquire right now? You know, once upon a time, like when I was first a comic book fan and I was, you know, like working at Marvel or DC, uh, you know, particularly Marvel, uh, you know, really seemed like the brass ring. And now I, I just, I can't even imagine, you know, first of all, I, I can't even imagine that they would ever, uh, you know, I, I'm too, uh, too outspoken to ever, uh, ever work for Marvel. Uh, but, uh, you know, I can't imagine that I'd ever get that call, but I'm not really interested in it either. Uh, you know, it's uh, the, the Marvel that I would have liked to have worked at is long dead. And the Marvel characters that I love, they don't exist anymore. They've all been bastardized and ruined. And, you know, there is a part of me that's like, you know, if someone said, hey, carte blanche, you can write you know, one book at Marvel, just, you know, jump on it right now. Actually, Captain Marvel or uh, or Miss Marvel are two that appeal to me. And people are like, what? why? Those characters are terrible. And I'm like, well, that's the challenge. The challenge is, could you go in and actually write compelling stories and make those characters popular? Uh, you know, I don't think that there are bad characters. I think that there's just bad creative. So that's, uh, you know, that's always like in the back of your head. Like, um, I, I think... Uh, I can't remember who it was. Uh, maybe it was Phil Hester who said that in the back of their head, every uh, every writer thinks I'm the guy that could make Doom Patrol work. You know, <laughs> like, so uh, you know, there's there's always that kind of thing. But yeah, no, um, I I have a much better time in independent comics. I don't have to break a story for crossovers. Uh, you know, I'm getting to do what I want at Merck Publishing. I'm getting to write stories and uh, you know tell stories with action and you know some uh, some sexiness and uh, you know just uh, just really kind of like uh you know the best part of 90s comics is uh, is what i'm uh, what i'm passionate about um you know 80s and 90s comics and, and the way that they felt you know when you read them so yeah no marvel they don't they don't exist for me anymore really aaron so if you went out on social media because you do work for merck publishing you're you're one of the big creative voices there and you started literally going after their customers and antagonizing them and telling them that they were wrong do you think you would get you, you would you hear about it Oh, I hear. Oh, I hear about it. Yeah, I, my ass would get fired <laughs> because you know that's like it's it's a very uh, customer service oriented company, and that's what appeals to me about it. Uh, you know, I like I actually like the comic reading public. I'm part of the comic reading public. I enjoy talking to comic book fans. Uh, it's part of the reason that I come on here and I do this show with you is because I actually really do care about the customers. The customers have given me everything. Everything that I've been able to do in this industry is because people showed up and bought the book and appreciated it, and you know, gave me feedback, and you know. I, I take it as, you know, if you give me feedback, as long as you're nice about it, you know, I'll, I'll come at you with the same energy you come at me. If you're polite and you, you know, but you didn't like my story and you give me some a critique as to why, I'll take that to heart. You know, it's like, I don't have that kind of like ego wrapped up in it where I feel immediately attacked. Uh, you know, so <laughs> the customers are the most important part of this business. Without the customers, there is no business. The issues with Kelly Thompson and Captain Marvel really are part of a bigger problem throughout comic books. They're really ruining female superheroes left and right. We talked about in the past that Kelly Sue DeConnick and Captain Marvel really was the start of this, really the downfall of female superheroes. They can't get any of them to work nowadays because there's so many stupid unwritten rules about how you can work with these characters. If you haven't seen this, definitely check this video out for some more Aaron Sparrow on Thinking Critical. If you don't see it there, there's also a link in the video description.